Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Brandon, also known as Bramat, and I'm here for a StarCraft 2 replay. And this replay will be on Ohana with our two players. Our first player spawning up here in the top left hand corner as our red Protoss player is Sage, who despite his clan tag is currently playing on Alt Tab Gaming, I believe. Uh, so I think, I know that this replay is a few weeks older, so I don't know how recent everything happened. But I don't think uh, he's on this current clan, that he has a clan tag too. I think again, he is on Alt Tab Gaming. But um, in the bottom right hand corner, we have our Zerg player. Team Liquid's Xenio, Zenio, one of those ways of how you say it. So he's going to be spawning, again, as our blue Zerg player down here in the bottom right-hand corner of Ohana. And uh, just some Korean speak going on, which I cannot read. Uh, I have someone in my house who can speak fluent Korean, but I cannot. So um, I won't be able to tell you what's going on there. But Nonetheless, uh, if you guys have not been watching the past one, two replays, I think it has been, um, my mic is currently not working. The one I typically record with, so I'm using a different one, so if the sound quality is a little different than, typical, than the uh, typical sound quality that I've had in previous videos, that is why. Um, this wor mic works perfectly fine, but a little different sound quality. That uh, doesn't bother me that much, so... To continue recording while I figure out what the problem with the other mic is, I'll be using this one. So, there you go, a little bit on that. And it looks like Sage might be attempting to go for a fairly early expand here, even though uh, it's only he's only about 100 minerals. So, or no, no, excuse me, this is the wrong base. He's going to be blocking off this hatchery. Uh, but he might actually be going for fast expansion anyway, so what I said was technically not wrong. He has a forge there, thrown down at the front of the base, and uh, again, he is going to be blocking off this hatchery, throwing down a pylon, just um, going to probably be canceling that uh, second or two before it's actually going to finish, so that way he can prevent the drone from throwing an expansion. He might actually throw down another pylon down here as well, because there's... When you can't throw down your hatchery down at the natural, Zergs, to typically throw down their hatcheries, will have to throw it down at the third. If they do, it's an uncomfortable position, because... Um, the creep spread that you can typically get between the bases is going to be a little harder to get, speaking that it's going to be very spaced out, so defending both bases at the same time with very few units in the early game can be very difficult. So he's put them in an uh, odd position. These rocks could be partially disturbing or annoying, I should say. Um, so this puts the Zerg player in an awkward position. It doesn't put them, like, totally unviable play, but it, uh, it spreads them out and makes them have to defend a big area and really have to stretch themselves compared to a one giant army that can come at a base. So now we do have the cannon down here at the front of the base for Sage as well as his first gateway. He's gonna have just enough space, I believe, that he's just gonna be able to pop out his elf and gonna completely block off that there. And these fourlings are not gonna follow this probe, uh, which was again harassing these bases. And Zanio is gonna go for a fast natural. So we're gonna have quick three bases here for our Zerg player. Um, and gonna also have these typical Overlord Scouts as well. Looking around, seeing what's going on. And total of three gases now for our Protoss player, Sage, who is uh, getting that economy. If we look at his current economy, he is doing fairly well. Um, pretty much even ground for both players. Oh, and wrong tabs, there we go. And he also has his Cybernetics Core coming down as well, so he's gonna be able to get that research out immediately for the uh, warp gates and might be able to go for other research if he so chooses and we do see again Zerglings out and about scouting around so making sure there isn't any pylons uh, I guess he was checking down here although I haven't really seen in the replays that I've watched many re uh, pylons being thrown down in these positions um, continue to produce Zerglings just making sure he has a base up and throwing uh, or being able to have base defense up he's throwing down his first extractor now as well oh well all three of these bases do have drones at them the second one has been saturated or is getting to being saturated fairly quickly as well as this first base here this pro is going to be going in scouting around seeing that uh, there I don't know if he saw both gases is this his camera view? We're going to see that he did see both gases go down at that main base. So he will know that uh, gas play is coming sometime soon, although that spawning pool is currently the only structure that's out. So it will just be Zerglings 
My, is he getting? No, he is not actually getting metabolic boost yet, just yet. He might just be delaying that for a little bit. But uh, we also do have this overload that has seen that gas being thrown down. I don't know if he knows about these other two gases. He just poked in there, and this sentry will probably be taking that overlord out. And yeah, Zenio, or uh, excuse me, Save. No, Zenio <laughs> now knows that uh, our Protoss player is sitting there on three gases. And a robo coming down as well. I don't know if he saw that. Oh, just yes. barely saw it. But nonetheless, poking out here for safe, just driving those Zerglings out of the way of the Zelnaga Tower there. And so at this point, Zenio's been doing very well at scouting. He's been checking around all in the base, making sure that uh, nothing goes hidden. Uh, so poking through knows exactly how many gases our Protoss player has, just throwing down that fourth gas now as well, but also sees those Robos, pretty much knows everything that's going on for our Protoss player at this point. Zenio is going to be getting a total of four gases it looks like, and is getting that metabolic boost which is about halfway done now. Also has that Roachborn and Evo Chamber to be able to start getting research here very soon. For now, just has these Zerglings at the base defense. Neither player has been too aggressive in the early game here. Now, obviously, we did not expect that from Sage going for a fat, uh, forge fast expand here. But it looks like he might be pushing out with these Stalkers here, just seeing if he can get any damage out. But these Zerglings will probably intercept that. They're going to be heading out, but they do not have speed just yet. So properly micro Stalkers will be able to quickly shut down that play. And this Zergling seems to be just patrolling back and forth, making sure that nothing hidden comes around the side here. And uh, these uh, Stalkers will just kill off that Zergling. These forces moving back and being sure to defend the base. How far? Metabolic boost, I think, just finished. So yeah, he does have Metabolic boost now, which could put these Stalkers in a very bad position, being able to surround them, and then the Roaches can finish everything up here. But we do see a Warp Prism out now as well. These Zerglings will kind of capture one of those, and the other two, very nice, blink and directly up into the Warp Prism there, dropping them, and they're going to probably do quite a bit of harassment. Lifts them up very quickly again. And an Observer coming out now as well, so he's going to be able to scout this all out, and probably even start some Warp Ins here with this Warp Prism. We do see he has a total of one, two, three, four gates as well as that one Robo. Overlord throwing down creep on this third base here. And uh, continued harassment from this Warp Prism, but this third base will be delayed just a little bit. Now pulling out there, uh, I think he's scouting to check that these rocks are going down. He can determine whether or not uh, Sage is going to be expanding sometime soon. These four Stalkers are being thrown down now. Does not look like he's going to get any additional Warp Ins. He will be blinking forward there, possibly taking out an Overlord, but will not be supplying, capping uh, Zenio. Speaking that he is very ahead in overlords. These Zerglings pulling in now, just making sure the Warp Prism can't cause problems. He will probably unload down here, might get a few worker kills, but at this point, this uh, this Warp Prism play has not done too terribly much for Sage. Then again, he has not lost any of his units just yet, so congratulations uh, to both players on that. That Overlord will go down. He seems to be going very sentry heavy on this play, as well as having an Overlord out. That will be able to deal fairly well with these Roaches, or the very few Roaches that are out now. Overseer poking in the face, seeing all of these gateways that he now has. So this will be a little problematic when all of those get up. And Xenio will be pushing out to this third base, which has not just been thrown out just yet, but that uh, probe will die. Force fielding there, and capturing a few units does look like he got a few kills there. This war prism completely exposed in the middle of the map, but nothing to worry about. Speaking that, our Zerg player has no anti-air at this point, and the Zerg player is throwing down his fourth base. So he will be going uh, quite heavy on that economy. This third base is being thrown down. This army here will have to defend. And whoa, where are you going? You might want to pull back just a little bit there. So he's getting stalkers, sentries, and immortals. This should hold off this little force here for a little bit of time. Surrounds could be fairly dangerous with these um, Zerglings. They could cause a little bit of problems, but again, this force is just so much larger from Sage that Xenio could be in quite a bit of a problem. Xenio so is going to pull back just in time. That army did not pick off any of Xenio's army. And pulling back here, Sage is going to be doing quite a bit of damage, maybe with this push. No, he does pull back. This Overseer taking quite a bit of damage today, and then he's back. And the Zergling does poke in and does see this Nexus here. 
So it does know that that is coming down and about how far done it is. It is about 75% of the way done. This fourth base is now up for Xenio as well. He's going to be able to start mining from that. And he hasn't really mined out any of his bases just yet, but it will be uh, very good for production and he will be transferring some drones it looks like. His creep spread hasn't been like amazing, but he has been making sure that he has creep spread up so far. And Xenio is going to be going out. We'll probably surround quite a few of these units here. Might cause a little bit of damage, but so many force fields is going to cause a lot of havoc. Cutting off Xenio's army into multiple parts. This will probably kill off a lot of this army. A bunch of are trapped here, and a bunch of units killed. Waste the force field there. But just so many work games at this point that this army is going to face a lot of troubles. The Pets are throwing down as many um, bundles as uh, possible there, but this Protoss army will probably survive for quite some time we're going down this road course just does not look like it can pose. Blink forward and all these investors will probably die off. Those Zerglings look to be misrallied. Pulling back all of his forces will try to gather them all at the front before anything wrong happens. And uh, wow, lots of creep tumors there. So you might want to start spreading that creep just a bit further. So we see in his base, he just has a ton of these. It looks like nine total, nine, 10 uh, total gateways. So he's just going to be able to consistently warp in. This could be very dangerous to say here, and that queen will go down as well as these two roaches. So, I mean, there's this little force here, but just how well these force fields have been thrown down and the constant warp ins from the warp prism, this could be a very deadly play from Sage. This will be very problematic for Xenio. But as we look in his production, he's getting a bunch of Zerglings as well as Infestors and some of those upgrades and spine crawls and such. He just wants to defend as best as possible. But this Sage his army is just looking so intimidating. Taking down that spine crawler, killing off all of these green tumors to prevent that green spread. A macro hatchery is going down here now as well, but that doesn't matter. That will probably have to be canceled very soon. No, it is not canceled. We'll lose 300 euros on that. This third base will probably be going down, not mining from that base anymore. Sage does look to be pulling back here. He might head up to the fourth base and cause some damage there, but just so few units for Xenio. Xenio might actually lose his entire army here, blink forward, and just this small little force will not be able to hold off. All inning now, bring, well not all inning, but bringing a lot of drones to the back here. Force fields blocking off a lot of those. A lot of the stalkers causing a ton of damage. Those zealots are a lot of um, damage in melee range as well, so this is going to cause a bunch of problems. This natural base might be going down here, and it does look like it's going to take quite a bit of damage, and no, instead he's going to be sitting here, this is a perfect position for him, he has two places where he can throw down force fields, also has his war prisons constantly getting units, and wow, GG, congratulations to Sage pulling off that play very well, and uh, congratulations to Xenio as well, he played very well in this game, sitting off of three bases and getting a ton of gateways there, bringing along that warp prism, and uh, getting in a very good position, I would have to say, in this natural, where he can just run two force fields at the front here, one, two, and then one on the ramp here. And generally, these rocks have not been yet killed off, so he's stuck right in there, and he can do as much damage to the natural as possible. Also, as a sword person for constant warpins. So congratulations to C. I think he's on Alt-Tab Gaming. Sorry if I messed that up. Please tell me in the comment section down below if I did. Nonetheless, please subscribe to the channel if you... Uh, if you have a spare second of your day that you can click that subscribe button, that would be very helpful. Uh, also, remember to like the video, favorite if you enjoyed it a lot. And uh, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys next time, and see ya.